Chancellor, I've got the manifesto here. Where in this manifesto does it say that the next Labour government is going to increase spending by 74 billion and raise taxes by 40 billion? Because I have looked through it and I can't find it. Well, you'll know that when I became Chancellor in July, that officials at the Treasury presented me with information that the previous government were overspending to the tune of £22 billion more than they had planned. In addition to that, there were compensation schemes that the previous government had signed up to but had not budgeted for, infected blood and the post office horizon scandal. And you... thirdly, I've just finished this point, and, and thirdly, the previous government hadn't done a spending review uh, that took us beyond this year. And inflation had put huge pressure on um, public spending. And so, as a result, we did need to raise taxes in this budget to put our public finances on a sound trajectory. of taxes. It's the biggest tax-raising budget since 1993. It's gigantic. But and you said before the election, no plans to raise taxes or the pre-em did beyond the £8 billion that you had earmarked. So a lot of people out there are going to be quite shocked today. Well, in the decisions that we've made in you the budget that, today... Though. I accept that this is a, a big and a substantial uh, budget. But it wasn't the budget that I was. Down, it wasn't the budget. With them. It wasn't the budget that I was expecting to deliver when I became Chancellor on the 5th of July. I didn't think that any government would be so reckless to have £22 billion pounds You've of lifted unfunded taxes commitments. You've lifted by £40 billion. I absolutely recognise that. In our manifesto, we had commitments of £8.5 billion. In addition, as I said, there's a £22 billion pound black hole even which if recurs you accept every Chancellor, year. Even if you accept the uh, £22 billion black hole, £8 billion of that is because you decided to settle public sector pay disputes are you telling me, seriously, that you did not have an inkling before the general election that you might have to find billions of pounds to settle those pay disputes? And why didn't you level with the British public about that? The previous government set the remit for the pay review bodies, the independent pay review bodies. And astonishingly, and we did not know this, and you did not know this either, they hadn't set an affordability criteria for the pay review bodies. Two of the pay review bodies on defence and education had already reported before before the general election was called, and the previous government sat on that information. Okay. So these were inherited pressures you, West, that the previous government West had stacked Street up. Streetin told me repeatedly before the general election, when I kept saying to him, the NHS is going to need more funding, he repeatedly kept saying, funding is not the answer, we're going to get it through growth. You have just announced £22.6 billion in extra day-to-day -day spending for the NHS. You just were not straight with the British people, and they will see through this. We you were not straight. We announced in the general election campaign that there would be an immediate injection of cash. It was a into few national, billion pounds which you yeah, had costed. Yeah, into this our is national 22 health service. Point 22.6 billion. When Wes became uh, health secretary on the 5th of July, uh, he asked Lord Darcy, the independent peer, to do a review about the state of our national health service. And uh, the report was damning and it was shocking. But Wes was also told that unless more money was available, the number of appointments. Chancellor, are that, you. Well, let me finish this point that okay. the number of appointments in the health service would actually have to be cut because the previous government Chancellor, had not committed the are money you for honestly it. We saying that you willing. have a democratic mandate for the measures that you have announced today. Tens of billions of pounds in increased spending and tens of billions of pounds of tax rises, none of which is in this document. You have a democratic mandate for this. The first line of the first step in our manifesto was to return stability to our economy. That is the most important thing that There's I another... had to do as Chancellor. And we do have a mandate There's for bringing an... that stability back to the economy. I think there'll be a lot of people path... thinking that they voted for you and you have just done the biggest tax and spend budget that we have seen for decades and that is not what they signed up for. There were two choices that I had to make today as Chancellor of the Exchequer. The first was whether I was going to be Do open and honest. That, can you see that the public might feel cheated? Well, the first... Even if there's a reason, you can, you've explained the reasons, can you see how it looks? I think the public know 
the state that the economy was in and the state that our public services were in and the damage that the previous government did to our public finances. Can you see that people might feel like you've broken their trust? And the first commitment we made was to bring stability back to the economy. And if I had a swept this all under the carpet, I would not have been able to Let, bring that stability back to the economy. In the manifesto, and it was stability that the last government forfeited, okay, which sent mortgage rates in through the roof. In the manifesto, the you criticised the Conservatives for taking the tax burden to a 70-year high. What is it now at the end of this Parliament after your budget? What we've, will it be? I, I, I'm be really straight with people. The tax burden overall goes up. But What's we've it made decisions. From where? It's the, it's the highest burden Ever. of tax. I recognise that. 38% of GDP against 36.4%, which you've been very critical about. Well, the last government, they increased taxes, but public services got worse. Uh, we will improve our public services with the commitments we've made around the National Health Service and schools today, but we have asked the wealthiest let's in our society and business to pay a bit more, yeah, while sticking to our manifesto commitment let, let's not go, to increase taxes well, well, that I've, working I've, people pay. I've got that manifesto yes. commitment right here, and it says the Conservatives have raised the tax burden, we will ensure taxes on working people kept as low as possible, Labour mm -hmm. will not increase taxes on working people, we will not increase NI, the basic higher or additional rates of income tax, or VAT. Employers, meanwhile, are paying £25 billion of tax on national insurance. It's a broken manifesto pledge. You say here we will not increase national insurance. Well, it's a just, broken manifesto you pledge. You just read that to me. So and, the, and the point there was around working people. Now, there was a, a, a lively debate during the election campaign where the Conservatives were really clear that we hadn't ruled out an increase in national insurance on Well, you on haven't because you've just raised it on no, employers well, by that's, £25 well, that's, billion. What, that's exactly what I'm saying, Beth. During the election campaign, there was a lively uh, debate and the Tories said that we hadn't ruled out an increase in employers' national so insurance. So you always intended to do it, you we just didn't, didn't want to say? No, no. We inherited a £22 billion black hole. Some people okay. said that given, given that the Tories' cuts to employee national insurance were not funded, that we should have just reversed that. Just on I it. didn't think that was the right decision just on it. because well, that would have broken for, a manifesto For working page. people, Paul Johnson uh, says that the increases in employer national insurance actually hits uh, those employing lower paid workers the hardest and he says probably three quarters or so of the increase will flow through to lower pay anyway so you're indirectly hitting workers anyway by raising well, business taxes by actually, 25 that's, that's, billion that's not right because we've increased the national living wage and the national minimum wage today and wages can't fall below that level so the lowest paid people are protected through the national living wage and the national minimum in wage in addition we have also ensured that the smallest businesses are not going to be paying more national insurance. Okay. In fact, a million businesses are either paying the same or less national insurance Chancellor, than they were previously. In 2017, the country rejected a manifesto from Jeremy Corbyn that talked of taxes of 48.6 billion. In 2019, they emphatically rejected planned taxes rises from a Labour manifesto of 82 billion. You now today roll in with a 40 billion tax rise after the general election. We inherited a situation where there was a £22 billion black hole in the public finances. There were commitments to um, compensate people for infected blood and the post office horizon scandal. And the path for public spending was not honest. So, a lot of so we've had to make difficult this. decisions based on the inheritance that we face. I don't get to choose the inheritance that I got as Chancellor. I do get to make the choices and about you have how to made fill choices. that gap. You've made and I've choices, made choices about today. massive increases in public spending. You've made choices to settle the public say pet sector pay deal I mean Jeremy Corbyn's full fat on tax and spend it seems to me like are you at half fat or are you just being dishonest well no one's ever compared me to Jeremy Corbyn before I stood down from his shadow cabinet because I disagreed with everything that he was uh, doing but if you're faced with a situation where there's a £22 billion black hole in the public finances, you can either sweep that under the carpet or you can be open and transparent and honest with people about the situation you find yourself in. £40 billion in tax rises and yeah. £70 billion in spending. And we have published uh, in today... Spending and borrowing. And we have and we've uh, published uh, today a line-by-line -line account of the £22 do you billion. you understand pounds, what I'm trying to get at here, which is the public will look at this manifesto, they voted for you, they come out four months later and there is a massive 
tax rising and massive spending budget from Labour. Do you understand why they might feel cheated by you, that you did not level with them about what the public finances might look after the election? There was a conspiracy of silence. Everyone was talking about the public finances not adding up. Well, the Office of Budget Responsibility today have you published said you'd a get report. It growth. The Office of Budget Responsibility today have published their analysis of how, in the spring budget, the, the Treasury, under the previous okay. government, uh, hid spending uh, commitments. I could either swept that under the carpet like the previous government did or be open and Chancellor, honest. I've got, I've got to be a responsible Chancellor quickly, and make sure that the I've sums got, always add up. You're asking the public for 40 billion tax rises. Can you at least reassure people there are no more tax rises after this? Well, I've committed to just have one budget a year. I'm not coming back to this no, in this, this Parliament. No, I'm not going to make uh, commitments to never uh, change taxes again. That would be irresponsible. But this is a once in a Parliament budget okay. to wipe the slate clean after the mess that the Conservatives have left Just us. final question, the markets, the guilt yields are rising, investors are worried about your budget. Guilt yields are going up. Uh, well, the, the, what I saw straight after the budget was that up. the FTSE had increased and uh, guilt yields had uh, fallen. They're going uh, but, up. Well, I, I haven't seen those light, latest market moves, but the combination of our stability rule that we will pay for day-to-day -day spending through tax receipts and investment rule to ensure that we can invest alongside business should give markets and investors confidence to invest in Britain. Okay, Chancellor, thank you so much. Thank you.